so in a few minutes you're going to sit down. Um, and I'm just thankful for everyone to turn up today. Hello, is everyone okay? Yeah. Well, the music stopped. Um, Welcome to our panel on 8-bit music, uh, a discography. Yeah, it was, it's definitely stuff I didn't that think I'd ever need to hear. Well, no, no, you can't be. Yeah. We've gone too far, we've gone too far. Okay, all right. We were just saying this. We should have done it. We never thought we'd ever hear it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it was interesting. There we go. It's more easy again. I'll just move it. I don't know. I don't know really notes. Musical chairs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is exactly how I thought this would go. <laughs> Excellent. And back in the room. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what is the best part about working with your sibling? <laughs> well, you, you can see bright white trainers. Like James has got these sneakers on today. Um, so you're always surprised. <laughs> That's the best part. Yeah, you can't. Look at it. Look at the camera, James. Can you show your, your shoes off? So he's just stupidly white. <laughs> oh, your entire career is working together. That's your favorite thing about working with your sibling. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> um, I've got to say something really deep and meaningful now, I guess. Yes. Uh, my, my would probably just be because we were, we were the only people on the whole cast to actually experience the whole Potter's thing with our sibling. Which was quite cool. So uh, there was no jealousy at the dinner table later. So, what do you admire most about each other? Not his fashion sense. <laughs> <laughs> is there a lot of like wardrobe stealing that goes on, or is it just kind of very separate stuff? I don't know, man. You guys are dressed pretty alike right now. Uh, I'll say that we um, we're just very lucky to have been able to be in such a, a great thing together and we're also able now to travel the world together and we probably have done more things together than other twins our own age will have done so we're just very fortunate for that. Surprisingly, I think I'm going to have a reaction to that. Uh, so what are some of those interesting things that you've gotten to do as a byproduct of kind of this adventure you're on? Awesome stuff. Um, there's loads of, I mean, there's a lot, like stuff that we can't really ever think of, oh, we do that. Um, like, for example, we're, we're huge soccer fans, so we were in Valencia last, earlier this year, and um, we were doing a, um, I think, a Valencia football club, and they asked us to take penalties on the pitch at half time, I think, like 40,000 people. Miss. I want to make a joke about you. Yeah. Right yeah. Uh, but just experiences like that is by the point of, of being part of the films. And also just coming to me like, I'm just saying it to be like, suck you guys into a, a talk. Um, but like the standing point of you guys, you meet so many people here today with photos and, and at the table. Because um, when you film, you don't have that, that connection to the audience. So this type of thing is beyond all of our expectations for this type of thing. We love meeting you guys and hearing your experiences from it. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So, when you make a film, yeah, 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 yeah. Bye, bye. <laughs> um, When you make a film, you don't have that connection to nothing, but when you do theatre, you do. So, what would your dream theatre role be? <laughs> no phones. Um, no, we, we, um, I guess, in whatever the project is, it varies. I was very fortunate, I did a stage show in London late last year, which was a true story about a, the first um, soccer team in England who signed up on mass to go and fight on the Western Front in the First World War. So it was quite a, an emotional role, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I was very lucky to have the cast that I did, because we all got on really well. Um, and that was just really good, but also, the, they say the audience feedback. Do, such a show like that, we had proper theatre goers and soccer fans, <laughs> which you never. And so there, there was actually one night where on the front row there are these two skinhead guys. And so the opening line, the, one of the actors walks to the front and he says, "Hello, everybody." And then all of a sudden you hear, "Hello, mate." <laughs> and then I go up to start my opening scene, so you can hear what's going on on the front row. And all of a sudden you just hear. I thought it was ginger. Oh. <laughs> but then fast forward to, to the, to, because it's, it's quite an emotional ending to the, the show. Fast forward to the end bit, and these guys are in floods of tears. And then afterwards, we're all, uh, we always used to go for a drink after the show. And this, this, this guy came over, he's like a big, scary guy, and he came and was like, Man, I've got to say, I've never been to the theatre before, but I love that. We're all coming down with our friends next week. 
<laughs> oh, I don't know if I like that or not. But... Yeah, cool. It was, it was nice to do that kind of theatre. Is um, it's cool you have different experiences. Um, yes, yeah, so I did a, a, a play as a touring around the UK last year, and it varied from doing it in front of like a, a 300 seat venue to um, like 2300 or something like that. So you see a big difference in it, um, but it was more of a, like a, a who done it type thing. So the general crowd for that is like retiree age, um, <laughs> but it was quite good because a lot of them were a lot of people who came on to see us um, or to see well, like Potter bands, so they wanted to see me do it. And uh, unfortunately, like, those. There's one scene where it's quite, it's supposed to be quite serious. Uh, whilst playing a detective, and he's basically saying, uh, I forget the line, but it's along the lines of, you know, we know he's dead, uh, he's been strangled. And I said, <laughs> These Weasleys, oh, they were so... <laughs> yeah, they sounded like that, yeah. So, so yeah, so you, you're trying not to laugh. And as a performer, you're dying inside because you're thinking, oh, I'm not doing this properly. Um, but yes, yeah, the good thing is you do get that, that connection. We actually have flown that exact audience in today, and they are now <laughs> yeah, yeah. like an encore for yeah, yeah. I was actually to a point where I thought, I'm going to tell them who did it right now. But yeah. uh, So, logistically or emotionally, in your entire body's work, what has been some of the most challenging scenes you've done? Quidditch. It was uh, different experiences every time because every time, every film we did, um, so it was like five films when we were on broomsticks in one way or another. So the technology advanced every time. So the first one was literally you're on a bicycle saddle, hoisted about 20 foot in the air and then flown around the room. <laughs> so we, and then by the end of it, the last one was literally you were kind of sitting on like a horse saddle and the camera moved around you, so the technology advanced every year. So that's pretty cool to be involved in that experience. Yeah, and, and as you say, I think in terms of like logistically difficult, um, yeah, I mean, even, as you say, I mean, going back to a broomstick scene, so we did the, so they filmed the scene when um, Fred and George fly out in the fifth movie to release like all the, like the fireworks and everything while all the guys taking those out. So all the students had recorded that scene, they filmed that scene, what, two weeks or so before we did it? So we hadn't actually known what was going on. And then they showed us a, a brief, like a, a B-roll, I suppose, of what it looked like. And they said, right, okay, so imagine there's going to be a massive fire dragon coming here and you're going to be throwing this out. And you're going, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um, but as it turned out, it worked out really well. So yeah, that was, that was a really fun scene to film as well. All right, so if you had to be stuck on a desert island with one of your Potter cast members, who would it be and why? How it's big, not each other. How big's the island? What a great question. Uh, <laughs> medium size, like nobody else is on there, but you could probably get from like one end to the other in a day. Oh, right, okay, okay. You're the first person to actually ask a follow-up to this yeah. question. <laughs> um, and is it a desert island? Is there like... Swimming pool, like golf course? There's an ocean, no golf course. Yeah, it's, quite, it's quite rural. Yeah, you'd have to like make your own kind of... There's an island you go to, there's a golf course. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a fantasy question. He is, he's yeah, doing yeah. a good job of actually... <laughs> no, you're on vacation, you're like... Yeah. Um... Assume you could like get a coconut and, you know, a stick somewhere and make your own golf course. You just want to go to Hawaii, essentially. Well, so I could go to Hawaii, you know, yeah, I'll be right. Um, anyway, back to the answer. Back to the question. <laughs> Uh, I would say, I'd probably uh, I'd say Rupert. Um, we used to do, th I mean, the three of us really, we were always um, in between filming because he'd be waiting around a lot. So he would be mainly in Rupert's dressing room, just messing around or trying to relieve boredom because, as I said, you can take a long time to set the scenes up, everything like that. And we do everything from playing on the PlayStation to playing table tennis to making a model aircraft which flew um, to making a Lego film like skill animation, to playing darts, um, to playing darts with a handmade crossbow, um, <laughs> to making silly games up, like throwable, um, which is a conversation for a totally different Does day. Does it also involve a cross game? <laughs> thankfully not. Okay. Yeah, thankfully not. Um, but yeah, loads of other stuff, like writing into a, well, I won't say the class member's name, but we were watching a daytime TV, TV, yeah, daytime TV show, and there was this guy who was basically trying to solve if you have pet problems. 
or you've got to eat weird doors by your pets. And we're watching this guy on the TV ramble on, and we're like, this guy is nuts. And then at the end of the interview, they say, if you've got any questions or, or want to put anything to him, please send your email address here to this address, and we'll get back to you. So we got this cast member's email address, and we knew, we knew what their cat was called, we knew how old they were, and we just wrote this email like, oh, looking funny at me, this and the other. Anyway, we sent it in, and didn't think anything of it, because we wouldn't know if we received anything. And then many, many years later in a press interview, um, this person says how they had to change their... I think they said, have you ever had any weird fan experiences? And they said, well, this person knew all about my cat, I changed my own. <laughs> <laughs> And like James Ruth and myself are sitting there like, oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it would be a fun island if we had that. Yeah. 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 Also, Rupert? Uh, yeah. Sure. Okay. Probably. You can answer differently. That's, no, that's, that's, I would say that. Okay. Uh, so I have a sister, and she's not a twin, but we uh, often will like be in sync, and so is there a kind of synchronistic thing that you wish you did not do without like thinking about it? Like we'll answer things the same way, we'll like thank you and you know, hello, how's it going, and I said without like doing it, so do you wish you were like, different? Or are you gonna I've got a theory on this, okay. I've got a theory on this, okay. So it's, you are exposed to the same things. Yes. You're exposed to the same language growing up, so you're going to be roughly in sync on that way. So I remember, again, we were doing this, uh, it, wasn't a, it was a uh, promotional thing, and we were on a new sofa. It was all very, oh, it's very cash, so we'll just talk, and then we get different guests, it's very cash. And there was this guy who was a, psych, who was a um, professor, and he basically written this book about twins and being psychically connected and all this stuff. And we were just like, so, guys, do you, do you think this is true? No. <laughs> and I started saying, saying that, I said, well, no, you know, we're the same age, have the same group of friends, everything like that. So you're going to be quite similar in that, in that regard. At least just saying, no, 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 it's not true. So, are you a twin, mate? No. So you can, yeah, you can get a few things. Like, this is getting really heavy. Sorry. It is. Yeah, that's what I sat down with. Yeah, let's have a laugh. Um, basically, he's the talk of the group. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't clap that last answer. <laughs> Do you guys have some things to work out right now? Like, <laughs> um, what is the most useful skill you've picked up from being on set that you can apply to the real world? You can play darts with a crossbow. <laughs> when have you applied that to the real world? On oh, piece of darts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, mine, mine was actually true. It's how I kind of how the characters rubbed off on like playing them rubbed off on me. So when in the first film and. In, Probably the second one as well. I was a very shy kid. Uh, I would be in the if there's any school photos, I'd be at the back. I didn't. I was very shy. And but then playing Fred and, and George, we you kind of have to be outgoing, otherwise you don't do the characters justice. So doing that kind of made me come out of my shell. And beforehand, this kind of thing would have scared the living hell out of me. But now I actually quite enjoy it. And um, it kind of made me switch, like just switch a bit more to having a lot more fun and. Um, enjoying uh, being silly a bit more. So I guess that's how um, my experiences have transcended into my real life. Yeah, I'd say a similar thing, just in terms of actually speaking in front of people like that is, is really cool and embracing. Uh, we are going to take audience questions in a moment if anyone would like to line up. So, how do you define personal success and how has that definition changed from when you were younger? Deep question. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. Uh, personal success, I would be, if, to be honest, some of the most satisfying jobs I've done have been the worst paid. But the emotional fulfillment of doing it, uh, you, you get to see, uh, uh, you go to bed feeling a lot more fulfilled. Um, so I'd say that you, I don't believe people value success is financing. I think it's how you feel afterwards, uh, that definitely means a lot. I think just in terms of like life in general, it doesn't necessarily have to be in a like, professional sense. Um, I think personal success is waking up with a smile on your face, or putting even more important, putting a smile on someone else's face, um, because you can be quite, you know, there's no, I think, although you're making someone's day like by just having a laugh with them or having a joke, um, it's quite, it's quite a bit awkward really. I was, uh, I was at the doctor's the other day, 
And um, I was coming out, right? And there was this woman in the waiting room, and she was like, I don't know what was going on with it, but she was like, you know, sat there. But she had a solemnly swear on up to make a good t shirt on. And I went by and I was like, it's a cool shirt. And she's like, right down. And I'd say, like, oh, oh. The nurse runs out of the door, is everything okay? Um, and she was like, this is oh. And I started splattering gibberish. Um, but just that, just that, you know, it, it, it meant, at the time, it meant nothing for me to say that, we're just making conversation. Um, but that probably, you know, you, you don't know what's going on with someone's day, it probably starts, you know, the better part of the day, hopefully. You know. But stuff like that's really good. What puts smiles on your faces? Which is some full over. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, everyone does the same. Everyone seems to give the bigger game full and over, stuff like that. I'm trying to lighten it. You are, uh, uh, put a smile on my face, my dog, obviously. Um, I would say just having a laugh, like literally just having a giggle. Um, obviously that's a laugh. It's a, it's a default <laughs> reaction. It, but uh, yeah, like all of a sudden, just silly little things, um, definitely. Cool. You bring a smile. Hi, so you were recently in a short film, Seven Days, so what can you share about making that project? Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, um, we were. So it's a um, it's a true story about a guy who we met quite a few times. Uh, times called Dave Healy, who's blind, uh, and he ran the seven marathons in seven days and seven continents. Um, and we just had uh, we know the producers and stuff, and Dave and they said, would you mind having a few like a part in it or two? Um, so I had a really uplifting part. I was the doctor who told him he was going blind. Um, <laughs> it was a serious bit. And then James was. I was. I was a. Oh, I was the pilot on the plane coming into land somewhere, and we had a cameo for his name. His nickname was Blind Dave, so Blind Dave was the co-pilot in the plane. So, yeah, yeah, that's all that was. Yeah. You can learn stuff as well. Don't you? Hello, Weasley Brothers. Hey. Uh, so, what was your favorite magic spell that was used in one of the Harry Potter films? Uh, mine was. I suppose I solemnly swear I'm up to no good because that was the first real, I suppose, a character for like um, a spell associated with a character, and especially for the, the Marauders map. So that was always really cool to say. And it was the first spell I actually said on camera. Um, it was the first time actually that scene was the first time we ever saw Fred and George's wand because we'd never seen them either. So that was cool. <laughs> trivia, trivia. <laughs> what, what spell do you think would be most useful in your real life? For you, personally. It's not necessarily a spell, but... Or power. Well, a pull key. <laughs> because it took me 13 hours of travel and two hours of immigration to come here. <laughs> or a pull key would be done. That would be very handy. Or Lumos. Because um, when I'm in a hotel room, I can never find the light switch, and I always manage to stuff my toe on something. <laughs> Going on my mind. Super practical. Yeah. Hi. Hello. Um, I think being British and living in California, I think I really cling to like my British roots now. Um, so it's like, really cool that you're here. I grew up with books in the film, so this is really cool. Um, but I was wondering if you've been anywhere where nobody knew where you were, who you were, so like about Harry Potter. Yeah, my church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, gave, I remember I gave a reading once and they were like, oh, he's very good, isn't he? He's confident. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's just kind of just, well, I don't know. The, the funny thing is that with Potter, it's wherever you go in the world, someone has some knowledge of it, uh, which is quite cool. Even if they've, they've never seen it, they've heard of it or something like that. Um, yeah, I've been, we've been in weird places and people have recognised it. Yeah, I, I, was, I was once on holiday in Mexico and I was swimming in the sea, just on my own. And this lady swam over to me, and I went bubbling up and was like, Are you in Harry Potter? I was like, yeah. And she was like, Cool, I'm just swam off. <laughs> so, yeah, like all of us said, there's, uh, there's at least one person everywhere we go that knows all Harry Potter, so yeah. It's, uh, what if you said no in the moment? She just said, like, Oh, crap. Just swam away. Do you sometimes go back to read the Potter books? 
Um, occasionally, yeah. Not necessarily all the way through, but I was actually clearing out a load of, uh, a load of stuff in my house about a couple of weeks ago. And I actually came across um, my collection of the books. So when every film would start, you'd get, you'd get the books and get them signed. And I found my first, my first book, um, which was all signed by all the cast and everybody like that. And I found myself reading the first couple of, uh, of pages to it. So it's, it's cool going back to it. I probably should sit down and read them all through there again properly. One day. <laughs> <laughs> um, out of all the Wizarding Worlds that you have visited, which one is your favourite? I'm going to have to have a politician answer here. They're all really good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll just say that to be honest, they've all got different quirks to them. Um, oh, we were just in, uh, we went to the opening of the new Hagrid's ride in uh, Universal Orlando. And I have to say, and I'm, I'm not just saying this, that is my favourite roller coaster anywhere in the world. I don't know if anyone else here has been on it. But uh, it is pretty epic. But don't want it after a load of butterbeers and butterbeer ice cream. I like that. <laughs> Two of the Skyrim snack box sweets, so a nose big nougat um, and a purple one. I don't know which one is. Yeah, and George's missing ear. <laughs> no, seriously, you walk into his house and he's got his head with a um, cast of his head with an ear on the wall. Are you telling me, okay, who, hands up who, if they could, would do it? Yeah, okay. But it's not really like, you know, it's not like it's been really, like chopped up. Um, so basically when you when you have a processed piece, they do a, a paper or a, a cast, a plaster cast for your head. So you know when you get your teeth done at the dentist, like gunk, they put that all over your head and shoulders, leave for 15 minutes, and then take it all off and then make a bust of it. And then from that, they can develop the prosthetic piece. So they gave me this this plaster, uh, this plaster cast, and I just yeah, put it on the, on the table as you walk in. So it's just open the attic. It's just there, you know. Cabin, yeah. you know and then you can put it time of year, you know, you can put like a part of a Christmas hat on it. Yeah. <laughs> you can put some good Seasonal. Yeah. <laughs> I have a twin, I have great aunts and uncles that can't tell my sister and I are, even when my, her kids are next to us. She's got two girls, I got a girl and a boy. So I was wondering, one, how long would it take the directors to tell you guys apart? And two, did you memorize each other's lines in case you wanted to switch roles during the movie? <laughs> uh, in terms of directors getting us wrong, mine you no, no, never got it right. <laughs> but he gave it by the end of the Yeah. Um, I think Tom still, Tom Bell, Tom Bell still 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 this day. <laughs> but we don't correct him just because it's funny. <laughs> and then, I guess we knew each other's lines simply because we were rehearsed with each other beforehand. But uh, just to quote any rumors out there, we never actually switch roles whilst filming because there's about 300 people who work on the crew, and you don't want to be that reason they're working late. So, um, but we did we did uh, have other kind of pranks with cast members outside of that, but not switching. Roles. Is it true though that up until very close to filming, like you were at some point you didn't know which of you was playing which? Oh yeah, yeah, so um, before the start of every film, you have a read-through, so you read through the whole script and everything. And we're sitting at the table with all the cast are around in a big room, and we still have no idea who's Fred and who's George. <laughs> <laughs> all we know is we sat next to each other and it just says the names on either side. So we see the casting director, Janet, and we say, who's, who's Fred and who's George? Said, yeah, good one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, know, really. Um, so she walks round the corner, or round the table, to be square, and uh, David Hayman, Jacob Rowan, and Chris Columbus are sitting next to each other. 
and you see it just like walk over and it's just this is how I see it, it's not what they were saying, it's how I see it. And they come round and Jenna comes back round and she says, uh, right, okay, yeah, uh, James, your friend, I'll be your George. So to this day, we have no idea uh, whether it was just going over the notes of a big meeting they had in LA, or Chris Columbus just looked up and was like, yeah, that was Fred, that was George. <laughs> 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 like a coin toss, like very subtly under the table. It probably did, yeah, it probably did, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any other memories of that first read-through? Like, that has to be a big... Yeah, lots. Yeah, so it was the first time we met a load of the, car- the, a load of the cast. Um, and at the time, uh, Peeves was going to be in the movie, the, the character. And Rick Mayle was going to play him. And growing up, he was one of, if not our, favourite actors, comedy actors in the UK. to used to the bottom and the young ones, those kind of shows. And he was actually sitting next to it, so I was literally fan, like fangirling out, <laughs> fanboying, fanboying out. Sorry. Um, but he was—I think he was the type of thing when some people say never meet your heroes, uh, but he was absolutely wicked. Because yeah. like the first thing what Fred and George do is uh, in the original script team is they they speak at the same time, and he was over the top. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Which sets for us being quite nervous at the time um, set us totally at ease. Um, yeah, and it, was, it was a shame we didn't get to do, we didn't get to do the scenes with uh, with Rick in, in the films, but yeah, that was that was really really memorable. Yeah. Hi, it's been twelve years since the last Harry Potter book. Eight years since the last movie. Are there still any scenes that are still surprising to you, or um, you can't believe to this day? How do you mean? Is it like when we filmed it, or? Uh, either when you read it in the books, in the scripts, or when you filmed it? Um, I think the, the one that I, when I read it, I, was, I enjoyed reading about it, and then when we filmed it, I was excited to film it, was the Quidditch World Cup. Because we're, we're huge sports fans, so we were like, how cool would that be to go to the Quidditch World Cup? <laughs> um, and I was telling someone about this earlier, so in, in that uh, sequence, uh, when we filmed it, uh, we were asked what kind of makeup would you like for the to be a fan, like you're a fan of Ireland, what would you like to have? So I said, I want a full shamrock on my face, I want as big as loud as possible. It took it about two weeks to film that whole sequence, so every day I was in there getting <laughs> everyone else's makeup would take two minutes because they literally had like two lines, but I had this bloody shamrock all on my face. <laughs> that was, it was a really cool cool thing to do. I remember they said so and we, like when you're on the um, on the gantry like cheering when the team come on and there'll be you know there's a bit of action, I don't know, one of the players just got hit or something. So but remember remember, just like just like you're in a football game. So it's like, what the <laughs> I can imagine you're not in a football game. <laughs> Hi, happy Saturday, thanks for coming. Uh, my question is, going back to the deserted island, and I think this needs to be answered. <laughs> yes. You both said that you would pick Rupert. Now, there's a, you're both not allowed to have him, obviously, so which one of you is Rupert going to pick? Ooh. I like you. <laughs> That's a question for Rupert. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a question for Rupert. <laughs> yeah. Look, Yeah. Go around the table. Yeah. Yeah. Gentle W. <laughs> now you really need that poor kid. <laughs> What's your favorite scene in any of the Harry Potter movies that you were in? Wow. Um, there's a lot for different reasons. Like you've got different things. So there was the um, uh, the Yule Bull scene in the Goblet of Fire. So we actually learned how to dance, like ballroom dance, for like three or four weeks before that. Um, and we must have done really well because for all of those dance lessons, you see me do a half turn. <laughs> <laughs> you watch it back. Um, yes, and we, filmed, we filmed that all, it was the week before Christmas as well, which is really cool they did the schedule like that. And it was the first time I think that we had proper suits made, um, although they weren't that cool looking. Uh, but we were able to see all that. Yeah, the Yule Ball, let's say. Uh, I would have to say when Harry, uh, Fred and George give Harry the Marauder's Map in the Prisoner of Azkaban. That was the first time that it was pretty much just all of myself and Dan doing a scene, and that was, it was and it's quite a pivotal part in the story because obviously the map comes in quite importantly. 
And also, we filmed that on the hottest day in the UK that year, but it's set in the snow. <laughs> so it was literally 100 degrees on that sound stage well, when we got all the hat and like, the scarves and everything else on. So literally, like, when we were filming, it was like, just take them out. Just <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really good. We had a lot of fun doing that, that scene itself. Um, actually, uh, my grandfather, when we were reading the scene with him beforehand, he actually said, well, why don't you do it like this? And then when we went down to meet Alfonso, just to rehearse with the director, he said, yeah, let's chop it like, like you were talking about. So that was, that was quite cool to do. There were many emotional moments in all of the Harry Potter movies, but nothing broke me more than when Fred died. Spoiler, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I haven't seen a wire in here. No, right? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just, I wanted to know what um, it was like for both of you reading the script for the first time. Um. Well, I, was, I started reading it, um, obviously reading, reading the scripts and seeing what happened to George, like losing his ear, and I was like, no. And then a bit later, I was like, oh, it could be worse. <laughs> Were you glad that the coin toss went the way it did? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I so I read it, um, so, um, I'm going to tell this story, I'm sorry if anybody's heard this before, but um, so I was reading when the book came out, I was in Japan. And I was on the bullet train, and I get to this this particular part in the, this, the book, and I was really surprised at what happened. I was then surprised that I was surprised <laughs> at how close I'd got to the character without realising how attached I'd become. So I'm kind of like, oh. at the meantime, the t ticket inspector is asking for tickets. So I'm literally like, I'm surprised at myself, but surprised that the characters. What's happened? And I'm surprised that I'm surprised that I'm so attached to them. And the ticket inspector says, like, Ticket, ticket. So I was like, Mate, I've just died here. Just let me get <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so that was quite a, a thing. But when it came to the actual day of shooting that, it was the easiest day's filming I've ever done. I literally just went to sleep. Make believe that, dude. <laughs> Hi, I was wondering, um, of the different sets that you were on for all of the films, which one was your favorite to film on? So the sets. 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 The different sets. Uh, oh, it's got to be Weezes, Weezes, and Weezes. Um, purely because it was built for our characters. <laughs> and it was literally, like, we walked on the stage when it was, we walked onto the set when it was all fully, all fully dressed, all the other actors were on board, the camera was literally ready to We had these really wicked tailored suits just made up. And it's just like bolder. Yeah. Like, all right, how much? Ten galleons, man. Like we started doing all that. Um, yeah, that's my favourite. So it's a shame we didn't film more in in the shop itself because it was. Uh, if anyone's been to the studio tour in London, you can see like the full size of it, and the interior of that set was actually how we filmed it as well. Uh, it can, mine can't change whenever you think of it because the the sets for Potter weren't visual effects; they're pretty much all built. So I remember the first time we ever walked into the Great Hall to film on the first movie. We were exactly like when the kids entered for the first time and you see that and they're all looking around and that was exactly what we were like the first time we went on there. And because we filmed, I think because we filmed in there every film, we got quite attached to it. Uh, we even had soccer games in there. Um, we rode BMXs around there when they weren't filming it. So yeah, we had, we had some good times in the Great Hall. So Fred and George are quite a prankster characters, and you also mentioned doing some pranks. Uh, so I would like to hear some pranks that you do on the set and the crew members. Uh, as I say, we we um, we really got this one person's head totally inadvertently. Um, we yeah, everything really, everything from convincing someone that her car had been repossessed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so. <laughs> we, 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 we kind of live by a thing where if you prank someone, you've got to be able to have the prank back to you. That's the rule. So we, um, I can't remember what she did to us, but it was, it was a terrible prank. Like, terrible. I think she pretended that she put the wrong hair dye in. Yeah, something like that. So we thought, okay, well, we'll 
I'll give you back for this one. She's the intern, by the way, in the hair and makeup department. <laughs> and we were having a hiatus for a couple of weeks. And so we were like, where are you going on your hiatus? And she said, I'm just going down to Cornwall on a holiday girls weekend away. Okay, cool. Went away. So we knew what her car registration was and her car, right? And the thing with a good prank is always plan ahead. So we had this huge script line there. And we didn't get involved with the call, so we got one of our pals to call up on that speaker. And he was just like, yes, hello, I'm calling from the council because we need to get in touch with you. Um, yeah, so I'm, I, Laura, have to get in touch with you when it crosses a thousand pounds. Um, and it's actually past that now. We've seen the value of your car is 1,900, so we're going to have to possess your car unless you can pay it. And she says, ah, I don't She's know. like, why, why? I'm like, well, you took this car to Cornwall. She's like, yes. And you parked in this car park. And she's like, oh, yeah, maybe, why? And so eventually, after about 10 minutes of her thinking that her car's going to have to be repossessed to pay this parking fine, she's like, in the room next door to us. And we can't. So we, we say to her, well, if you want to complain, the email address will be O L I V E R P H E L P S at wegotyou.com. <laughs> to which she then starts writing the O L I. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> well, you could just do easy stuff like um, hammer on someone's door so they come running out, but you put a load of cling film over the front of the door. Hold on to the best. What is the best joke that someone played on YouTube? Uh, <laughs> I think after a couple of pranks they learned not to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like... Based on those stories. Yeah, it seems so, like yeah. a safer choice. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, really. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. So, um, Emma Watson. I read that somewhere she said that she would play McGonagall in a, if there were to ever be a reboot, who would you guys play each and why? Dobby. Let's find a wardrobe. I can do the eyes. <laughs> and then you could be Creature. <laughs> But if it's a roof, it could be different, so it could be like really tall house house. <laughs> so you clean the top of the house. What's your favourite Harry Potter movie? To watch or to make? <laughs> watch. Watch. Um am I in the most? Probably Deathly Hallows Part 1. I always wanted a gory, I always wanted a, uh, a wound, and had my ear moulded off, it was quite cool. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, sorry, but I lose my ear. Um, yeah, that was, that was a really cool scene to film as well. Uh, I'd say the Prince of the Philosopher's Stone, or the Sorcerer's Stone, so if you will, uh, just gets the first one. So how do you prepare for the call back audition for Harry Potter? <laughs> Um, we kind of just thought, so we, yeah, so we, we went for an open audition and then we got a call back saying, can you come and meet the director and the producer? Um, and by the way, we're going to fax you this, this before email. Um, <laughs> Shocks that yeah, happened this room. <laughs> yeah, I know. So we got, we got a fax, which is this device which is based like a printer. <laughs> um, but it came to be a telephone. And if you didn't have one, you had to go to the post office to use it. Anyway, I'm getting sent to that so you get this fax, and um, yeah, so you get this fax, and it's got the, the script pages on it. So we, we learned this for about what, two, three days, and then went to the studios for the first time, and met Chris Columbus, uh, Janet Hudson, the head casting director, and I can't remember who else, David Hamilton. And we're kind of like, Ooh, this is a bit, it's getting a bit real now, isn't it? Although the studios, I was expecting like the studios you have in the Burbank here, like these amazing sound stages, but at least the studios where we filmed was actually an old aircraft factory. So, if anyone's ever seen the film The Memphis Bell, um, that is the studios where they landed. Um, full of trivia today, aren't you? Hey, hey, hey. Are they in the pot of course? Oh, there you go. Next time you'll know. Um, so, yeah, so we, we got into the, the room and 
and, uh, and they said, right, we love it, can you swap it around? So we played the different parts, and that was it, off we went. Nothing, nothing tried, nothing lost. And then we, we tried it again the next day, uh, or about two days later or so, we, uh, we got a call back saying, hey, can you come back again? And this happened for about three or four more times. And then, uh, yeah, and then we went for a, a casting the screen test, which is when you sit on the, a main set. And we knew we were getting close because they tried to colour our hair. Um, <laughs> so we're like, hmm, okay, this is looking good. And we, we sat down on the set and we, we did the scene, and then Chris started to be a bit more open to it. Right, so who wins, who wins out of a fight between you guys? And we didn't realise that the American terminology for a fight is like, you know, verbal. We call it physical. <laughs> so, I, so I said, well, I'm not a good left hook. To which all the crew laughed, well, the Americans went, what? <laughs> <laughs> they must be running, that's good, that's good. Uh, so, yeah, so this was um, on the 31st of August, I remember, because it's my dad's birthday. And then the next day, uh, Mum gets a phone call, we're, we're all at home, and uh, Mum asks the phone, and it's Janet, and she says, um, yeah, is that, is that the Mum of the Weasley twins? Yeah. So that was, that, that was quite a cool, uh, a cool way to go about it. And then three days later, we've got bright red hair or bright ginger hair. And uh, yeah, the rest, the rest kind of went from there. Good question. Yeah. Right, we are going to try and speed through as many things as possible. Hello. Hello. So you guys have been in eight Harry Potter films. And out of every scene you have to film, what were your most favorite and your least favorite scenes to film? I think we got most favourite already, so let's do least favourite. My least favourite, uh, in the third, Quidditch in the third movie, because it was set in the rain. Yeah. So you're on this broomstick, which is already uncomfortable, and you've got wind being blown in your face, and it's you right before the main, like, the, the action. This guy just turns up and just... <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that would be my least uncomfortable answer. Um, least favourite scene for me would be... Uh, yeah, probably Fred, when Fred snuffs it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rebecca Rose. I've been doing a lot of high school productions, and this last year I learned how to fake cry and scream and all that. And I've learned that if you don't do it correctly, you go into a coughing fit. In the last movie, did you ever go into a coughing fit? Now, this is method actors right here. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was kind of, yeah, I was more method with it. Um, so you're already like emotional before you go on stage. And so you're thinking like about, you know, when you've lost a relative or something like that in real life. So you're already in that position. So you get upset already a bit, you know, on edge. And then this makeup lady comes up and goes, <laughs> blows a load of eucalyptus spray in your face. So that's where the tears come from. You know. <laughs> Eucalyptus spray. Eucalyptus yeah. <laughs> spray. Um, just remember, and this, this applies to everything if you go for a job interview, anything. No one who's watching you wants you to fail or suck. They want you to be good. So you, that's, that's half the problem already solved. Like you, they're on your side to start with. So just go out there, do, no, do what you, you know you can do already, and uh, it'll all work out. Which famous yes. twins would you like to play in cinema? Oh, cinema or literature? Or literature. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, got, I think we got the coolest ones of all. That's what I'm saying. What's that? Uh, do Wonder Twins? How is it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could do. She's a big fan of the Harry Potter, and she wanted to know what are your favorite magical creatures? Um, favorite magical creatures? The dragon. Yeah, dragons are pretty cool. Um, Thunderbird's pretty cool. Niffler. He's quite good with jewels. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah we have, there's, there's quite a few knocking about. Go really fast. What made you guys want to try out for Harry Potter to play Fred and George? Two, there's two reasons. One, we may get in a film. <laughs> Another really important thing, we had to stay off school for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
Well, it was at the end of term when like neither of the teachers really care what you're doing anymore. So yeah, so we asked for permission and they said yes. So that was yeah, it's when they it's when they used to just rock up and you'd watch a video. So a video for people who didn't know what a fax machine was. <laughs> is, um, they used to get the massive TVs on a big wheel out there. Yeah. yeah, the best day at school. I know. Yeah. Yeah. We are at time, I'm so sorry. Thank you both so much for being here.